Hey guys! So, as most of you know, if you have been with my channel for a long time, then you know that I took a long break. I think it was about two years. So, during that time, a lot, a lot of things happened that kind of contributed to me not making videos anymore. If you follow me on Instagram, then you probably know a little bit, but I would like to go into um, detail about a few things that happened. So, the first one is obviously we lost a baby. So, this was about a year and a half ago. It was in November of 2016. And, um, basically, what happened was after I had my last son, who is now three and a half, um, I had my tubes tied. So, afterwards, um, a couple of months afterwards, I started having a lot of pain in my abdomen area, lower abdomen, and, um, it just kept getting worse and worse. And so finally I went back to my gynecologist and I told him, you know, something's not right. I've had endometriosis before and had that um, removed through endoscopy. And so, you know, we were kind of worried that maybe it had come back. Um, which is very common with endometriosis. Sometimes you have to, you know, have the tissue removed several times. So he said the only way to really know is just to go in with an endoscopy and so he can look around and see what was going on and then he would go from there. So once he got inside he realized that I had a very rare complication from having my tubes tied and my right tube had not been releasing the fluid through it and so it had swelled up and had almost ruptured. Um, that is what was causing me so much pain. So he had to remove, completely remove my right tube. So I still had my left one, which was of course tied. And um, I thought that was it, you know, everything was gonna be fine. I felt a lot better. Um, so then about I guess it would have been about a year later, I think it was, um, I started having a lot of weird symptoms. And honestly, I thought I was going through early menopause. And um, I was having like hot flashes. I was super, super tired, just so fatigued and I did not feel well and had a little bit like a little bout of nausea here and there but i also have ibs which can contribute to nausea as well so um i was just my hair was kind of falling out if you guys follow me on instagram you know that and just a lot of weird stuff and i thought for sure like my hormones were changing i was going through early menopause i just knew that something was not right and so I was talking to my friend next door and I was telling her you know what what was going on I said I'm gonna have to go to the doctor I made an appointment with my gynecologist to see what's going on and get my hormone levels checked and stuff and she was like oh wouldn't it be crazy if you were pregnant and I was like huh no that's you know like I can't get pregnant I only have one tube left and it's tied like you know and then I started thinking and I was like oh my gosh, like, could I be? Like, these are the symptoms that I had when I was pregnant. Like, oh my gosh. And so I started, you know, of course, Googled it. And, you know, it can happen, which, I mean, I knew it could. But I didn't think that was a possibility for me, especially only having one tube. So I went and got a pregnancy test, and it was positive. So I went and got another pregnancy test. And it was positive and so I knew that I was pregnant and I knew that more than likely it was in my tube and so immediately that was the weekend and immediately on Monday I called my doctor and 
I, I told them, the nurse, you know, of course, I said, I, I'm pregnant. And she said, no, you can't be, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I'm telling you, I'm pregnant. And she said, if you are, you need to come in immediately. And I said, okay. So my husband called into work, took me to the doctor, and they said, maybe it was just a fluke with the pregnancy test. You know, maybe there's just something going on. So they made me do a urine, a urine test and it was positive. And so she said, I just, like, I can't believe this is happening. This is like one in a million. Like, I, I, I can't believe it. And I was like, I, I told you I was pregnant. I knew it. And so she um, went and got the doctor and he said, of course, we needed to do an ultrasound to see if the baby was in my tube or if it was in my uterus. And so we went and did the ultrasound, and the ultrasound tech just said, I'm sorry, it's in your left tube. And I immediately just started bawling because I knew that, you know, there was nothing we could do about it. And, of course, that, you know, it wasn't going to be a viable pregnancy. And... I know people are thinking, like, you got your tubes tied, you didn't want any more kids, blah, blah, blah. I got my tubes tied because to have more kids was a risk to my health. I had such a hard time with all three of my pregnancies. My last one was very, very hard. Very. And so, after I had my third child, my doctor talked to me about it and he said, you know, he, thinks, he thought that it would be best for my health to um, go ahead and get my tubes tied because I really struggled so much with my pregnancy. So it's not that I didn't want more kids. I just didn't think it was an option for me. Physically, mentally, I just did not think that my body could handle carrying another baby. And so when she said you know, that it was a tubal pregnancy. She just, you know, walked out of the room because I don't think she knew what to say. And I'm sure it's not the first time that she's had to, t you know, tell someone that, but I don't think that that's something that you get used to telling anyone. And my husband didn't understand what that meant. And he said, you know, why, why is she upset? Like, why are you upset? I don't understand what this means. And I was like, you know, they're, they're going to have to take my tube. They're going to, you know, I, I can't carry the baby. And he just started crying. And so if you haven't been with my channel very long or don't know all the details, um, I have three kids, two from my previous marriage, and then I have one with my current husband. So he only has the one child. So he did want more kids. It's just, like I said, I didn't think that I could carry, the, you know, another one physically. And so he was very upset about it. And um, the nurse came in and said, you have to go immediately to the hospital. She said, this is very, very dangerous. You need to go immediately. So we, you know, gathered up our stuff. I called my mom and told her what was going on because she was with um, the kids and everything. And so let her know that I had to go, you know, to the hospital. And um, so I checked in and signing those papers was like one of the hardest things. I have ever had to do. I felt like I was signing away, you know, my baby. Like, I felt like I was giving them the right to take my child. And I went ahead and, you know, I had to sign the papers. Um, for consent and they took me back and I cried the whole time while I was in pre-op waiting 
and um, my husband couldn't be back there. He came in with me for just a moment and then they had him leave because they were prepping me for surgery. So um, the doctor on call came in and um, you know told me that they were going to have to remove my tube and everything. So I went into surgery and I came out and when I woke up I was crying. I cannot explain the pain. Not physically, just emotionally. And the doctor came in with his nurse and um, he said, why are you crying? Why are you so upset? Are you okay? And I said, I feel like I just made the choice of myself over my baby. And he said, you didn't. There was nothing you could do. And he said, with all the technology that we have in modern medicine, there is still no way to move a baby from a tubal pregnancy into the uterus to be a viable pregnancy. There's just no way. We can't do it. And he said, once that he got in there, my tube had already ruptured. So I was bleeding internally. And, um, you know, when the baby's growing in your tube, your tube can only expand so much and then it, it ruptures. So, um, we kind of figured out, you know, how long, how far along I was, but the doctor said that it's hard to tell because the baby can't, you know, of course it's, it's not growing how it's supposed to because it, it doesn't have everything it needs and it's not in the space that it needs to be, etc. So, um, he said, you know, if I had waited and not come in, I would have bled to death. Not to be dramatic, but I was bleeding internally, I would have bled to death. But I told him, you know, I just felt really selfish and he said, there's just nothing we could do. Even if you hadn't signed the papers and had us remove your tube and everything you would have died therefore the baby still you know it either way it, it wasn't gonna make it however mentally I understood what he was telling me you know I I understood what he was saying but it took me a long long time to get over that feeling of feeling selfish and um, like I made the choice to save myself versus my child and I carried a lot of guilt and a lot of frustration because the complication that I had after having my tubes tied with my first tube, that was like a one in a million thing. It rarely, rarely happens. So, okay, I had one complication. It happens, you know, not that big of a deal. It was a quick, easy surgery. I wasn't down very long. No big deal. I wasn't upset about it. And then when I have a second complication from having my tubes tied, I was just really frustrated. I was kind of angry with my doctor because I didn't understand why I had two very rare complications from having my tubes tied. And I, I still don't understand. I don't know why it happened. Um, either of them, honestly. But... I do just want to put that out there because I want you to really think about getting your tubes tied and the complications that can happen. I never even looked up the, the complications that could come with getting your tubes tied. I knew tons of people that had it done and I just thought, you know, 
that's what most people do like it, it'll be fine I didn't think anything of it. it was just you know a routine surgery that everybody has done no big deal but I wish now that I had more thoroughly researched it and thoroughly researched the complications and the other options um and i also just want to share my story so that if someone else is suffering you know the guilt the frustration and the depression that comes along with that is really hard and i felt like you know after i had cried for a week i felt like okay this you know I should be better by now and like everybody was expecting me to just go back to normal life like nothing ever happened and I just couldn't do it I could not get past it I was really struggling with it and so you know my best friend told me you know don't feel like you're in a hurry to grieve you know just take your time it was your body it happened to you so you know it's okay to take as much time and cry as much as you want to cry and so that helped you know just little words of encouragement like that really did mean so much during that time and you know trying to explain to my older kids what had happened was not easy either and it just it's a very rough thing to go through and i just want anyone else to know that it's going to be okay time doesn't heal it just makes it easier so it, it will get better you will get through it you are not selfish it's not your fault you didn't do anything wrong it just happens and it's okay it is okay to be sad it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. Those are all feelings that you're going to go through, and it's okay. It is a very tough thing to go through, and I don't think you can understand it until it's happened to you. I know I didn't. I knew other people that had had miscarriages and tubal pregnancies and stuff, and I never understood. I was sympathetic but not empathetic because I didn't fully understand the feelings and the emotions that came with something like that. So I just want you to know it's okay. Just take the time that you need. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, one of the things that was going on in my life when I quit making videos and that's something I went through and some other things which I don't know if I'm going to share on YouTube because they are very personal and involve other people than myself. So I don't think that I should probably share those with the world <laughs> um, because it does involve other people besides myself. So anyways, um, I hope that you guys are having a great weekend. Um, and please, if you're struggling, just know that it will be okay. It will get better. And I know that people say that all the time, but it really is true. This too shall pass. Bye guys.